So uh, in many applied fields, it, it's important to uh, find a discrete approximation of a continuous distribution for a continuous stochastic process. And uh, since I'm an economist, uh, I can only list examples in uh, economics. But uh, for example, um, optimal portfolio, portfolio problem, optimal consumption setting problem, or general equilibrium problem, uh, we usually want to discretize the state space to set uh, computational uh, complexity. And uh, you can use the framework also to uh, estimate dynamic economic models and also uh, compute the uh, option prices when, uh, by Monte Carlo when the uh, option price has no possible solutions. So um, in this paper, I provide a simple framework for uh, discretizing, discretizing distributions and uh, stochastic processes. So now uh, let me compare my method to existing method. Uh, the existing method all use uh, some, some kind of quadrature formula uh, listed here. So uh, you have uh, some discrete points and you evaluate the uh, density at the, uh, these discrete points and then you take some weighted average. And you can use a uh, standard quadrature formula like a Newton codes or uh, Gauss type uh, methods. Uh, but these uh, methods have some disadvantage. First, uh, the uh, quadrature methods like Newton codes of Gauss type works only in one dimension. And uh, the discrete points are constrained, the choice of discrete points are constrained by the choice of the quadrature me method. So you cannot choose the uh, points freely. And uh, on the other hand, when you want to choose the discrete points freely, then uh, you can use some um, uh, method like uh, uh, Tauken or Alan Cooper, which are standard in the literature. But then the problem is that uh, the moments of the uh, approximate uh, distribution is not exact. So even the mean or variance are not exact. And, uh, and of course, uh, when, if you want to think about multi-dimensional problems, then it becomes more complicated. So these are the uh, disadvantages of existing methods. So now, um, mathematically, the problem is as follows. So suppose that you are given a continuous density f, and suppose that you are given some uh, moments uh, t, t bar. So here, uh, t bar is the value of the moments, and the t of x is the function that defines the moment. So if, for example, if you want to match the first and second moment, then t of x is x and x squared, for example. And now, uh, suppose that you are given some uh, discrete points, and the problem is to find a discrete uh, probability distribution that matches the moment exactly. Uh, so that's the problem, and uh, I think some of the uh, audience here might have guessed what I'm going to do already. So my solution is to start from some quadrature method, uh, quadrature uh, formula, and then I'm going to choose that probability by minimizing this uh, probability lifeline information relative to the initial quadrature formula. So subject to the moment constraints, and of course, since it's probability, uh, it has to uh, come up to one. So, so that's, that's the idea, very simple. Uh, and the nice thing about this framework is that, uh, as is well known, uh, when you want to mis minimize the cobalt level information, uh, you can consider the dual problem of that, the central dual of that, and that problem becomes an unconstrained minimization problem uh, that is uh, uh, where the uh, objective function is strictly convex. So um, instead of solving an optimization problem with many unknowns, with many constraints, you can reduce it to an uh, optimization problem with uh, few constraints, uh, no, no constraints, and few variables. So, so, so it's very computationally variable. And in an earlier paper, uh, I proved that it a solution exists and is unique and uh, provides some numerical example. But the contribution of this paper is that I proved that uh, uh, this approximation method converges to the true distribution as the number of points tends to infinity. So, so that's the new part. So for this, uh, I need some assumptions. Uh, so basically, the only assumption <coughs> is that uh, the quadrature formula converges to the uh, uh, true uh, integration for uh, for uh, bounded functions as well as the uh, moment defining functions. So these are the base, basically the, the only two assumptions I need. Okay. And uh, I introduced some uh, error notation. So P of GM is my error for my, my approximation for the 
when you have a pseudo-square k, it means that, that it's the error for the initial for the formula. And the main result is that, uh, well, there is some gigantic uh, expression, but the main point is that my approximation can be bounded about by the uh, approximation error of the given quadrature formula. So everything is uh, proportional to uh, E of uh, A or something. So it means that as long as the initial quadrature formula converges to the true thing, then my approximation also converges to the true, true thing on top of matching moments. So, so that's what's uh, interesting. Okay, so uh, now I apply this to uh, some uh, numer numerical examples. Uh, first, I approximate the uh, standard normal density and beta density uh, using this way, and I compute the expectation of the uh, exponential function. And for the normal case, uh, the black line shows the uh, uh, approximation error for using the trapezoidal formula for the quadrature me method. And it, as you go down, I match two moments, three moments, and six moments, and so on. So you can see that the uh, uh, order of magnitude of accuracy improves uh, dramatically. And this is for the beta density, uh, so it's, uh, it works even better. And now uh, the interesting part is that I apply this method to approximate an uh, DAR uh, process. DAR is uh, vector order regression. And uh, so basically you have a vector here, it's two dimensional. You have two dimensional vector, you multiply by some matrix, you add some noise, and then you can generate time series. So that's called uh, DAR. And uh, in order to compare to existing results, uh, I pick the uh, quotient matrix the same as uh, existing papers. And then uh, I generate uh, samples of uh, length 2 million, and I discard the first uh, 200 peasant to, to uh, study only the steady state. And I generate 1,000 samples like that, and compute the uh, mean square error and the bias. So here's the result. Uh, so this column with uh, tau is the uh, standard method due to tau can, and that's what basically everybody uses. And uh, the column but with a GL is, uh, is a method proposed by a recent paper by Klaus Podinov and Doug Bastrens is here, uh, which is, to my knowledge, is the best existing method. And you can see that their method improves uh, the mean squared error and bias dramatically compared to uh, the standard tau can method. But now my method, improves by about two orders of magnitude compared to the best existing method. So I think it does a pretty good job. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, 